Hey, India, this is John Tardy with Obituary. You're listening to Metal Wani. How are you doing, John? I can hear you good now, yes. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, what about you? How's it going now? We're doing terrific. Wonderful. I know you guys uh, you know, are working on the new album, and I'm very excited about that. And I think uh, you guys have finished uh, writing this sometime in November 2013. So what can uh, obituary fans accept from this album? Um... I don't know. I can tell you, we're really excited about it. Uh -huh. um, we, uh, it's all written, and we've just been really rehearsing the, re, re, you know, just jamming it. Uh -huh. uh, really getting familiar with the songs before we start recording, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all behind schedule. But I think we're going to start recording as soon as we get back from that seventy thousand tons of metal cruise. So. Right. So, uh, is the album yet to be recorded, or the writing has been completely done? And the writing is all done. We have not really recorded it. We have not recorded it yet, though. So oh, um, we we're hoping great. to get we we're hoping to get started on that, but it just it just hasn't gotten ready yet. So, um, but uh, we'll get on that as soon as we get back from the cruise. So uh -huh, that's wonderful. Now, will it be having all the signature elements of obituary, or will we see the band dabbling in any new experiments and elements? Uh, uh, no, I think what you're looking at is a pretty darn classic obituary sound album. Wow. Um, it's got some, it's got some little different stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been really cool because, you know, we got Terry Butler in the band and he's, you know, he's on, he's, this is the first album he's doing with us. Right. Uh, so it's cool to hear his input and, and when we, you know, when we bring him into the studio and songs we've been working on where he gets to hear him for the first time. Uh, it's it's good to see his face and his reaction. And I know, uh, and uh, Kenny's also in the band now, yeah. and uh, he's just a longtime friend, and, and and you know he's with us now. So it's good to see both their reactions live, you know, right as we play like a new part for them. Wow. And uh, there's been a lot of it, you know. They'll they'll make comments like you guys never did anything like that before, uh, and things like that. But they're just little subtle things here and there. But it's overall, it's going to be a very uh, classic sound and obituary record. That's awesome. Now since. Kerry Andrews and Terry Butler are part of the new you know, the lineup. So, of course, there must be something which they're bringing, you know, uh, to the obituary sound, some sort of a creativity which probably you guys might not have done in the past. Um, well, they neither one of them really have done that much writing mm -hmm. um, for this. Um, you know, I mean, Terry's had some input just because he's been here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we all kind of, we come to a point where it's like, you know, you can kind of do something a few different ways, and we just got his input on that. Right. So, um, it, you know, it really hasn't been a you know, huge, huge difference, uh, but it's been nice to have the, even those subtle differences in some of right. his opinions. Um, and then, you know, I, I really think that Kenny's going to be a nice dimension for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas, whereas Alan was, you know, was, was not technical at all, mm -hmm. and I think Ralph is probably a little bit too technical. Um, I think Kenny has a real nice mixture of of technical and you know you know a lot of bar kind of stuff to him so right. uh, I think it's going to fit real good for us. That's wonderful. Now, as always, Tardy Brothers, you know, surprises with every album. So I'm sure you guys, you know, you and your brother would have written a lot of material for us, you know, to annihilate <laughs> us. <laughs> right. This, you know, I I told the guys when we first started writing this, and this has got you know we've been writing for a couple of years now. Right. But I. I so I told him, I said, look, man, when we're done writing these songs, I'm not recording anything until we play these things for weeks and weeks. I mean, literally to the point where we're ready to go play a live show with these records before we start recording. Right. Because I just I wanted to leave us every opportunity uh, to feel the songs out, get super Absolutely. comfortable with them, and, and let, you, let your mind flow a little bit. Let those ideas take time to come. You know, Donald says it all the time. He's like, God, you know, if I could go back and record this, you know, what we'll play a lot of songs live, but he'll be like, if I could go back and record that song, you know, say I'll cause a death again right now, I would do this, 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 and this, and that, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Because you that, right. we played them for so long, you know, it gives you, gives you all the time to do that. So that's where we're really at, which is a fun time, you know, because they're new songs for us, so we're, we're going through them and we're jamming, having fun with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And by the time we 
by the time we hit record, it's just gonna, it should flow real nice for us. Wonderful. Now, but are there any plans of uh, you know playing a few songs in seventy thousand tons of metal? Yeah, we are gonna play a few songs. I'm not sure how many. Probably at least three, or about three of them, probably off the album. Wow. So, obituary fans have something to look forward to. Yeah. Are you gonna be on the boat? Uh, not really. We are very far. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be cool. I think we're going to play about three songs off the new record, which will be kind of fun to do because we're not even recorded yet. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Awesome. Now, what specifically compelled the band to embark on the Kickstarter campaign? Were you confident that you would reach the financial goals you had set for yourself initially? Uh, I don't know if I was confident we would hit any goals. I, you know, I was kind of uncomfortable with the whole thing from the get go. But mm -hmm. you know, we kind of, uh, you know, talking to a few people and some friends here and there. We just decided to give it a shot to see what would happen. Okay. Um, you know, the bottom line is, is we just so badly wanted to release the album on our own. Right. Um, uh, you know, we, you know, and like I've said, you know, it's not any bash on any record labels or something. I mean, we've had good experiences, we've had bad experiences, and everything in between. But right. You know, at the end of the day, we've done it enough times. Um, you know, the world is just such a smaller place than what it Absolutely. used to be. Right. Uh, so, so much of the money we used to try to get from record labels was to sit in a studio and write and record and stuff. And, True. And we've invested in our own gear. We have our own studio here that we can record in. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big that big chunk of change that we used to have to dump is right. no longer there. So, you know, the bulk of what we have to do is to is going to be, you know, is marketing for the album, which is it's going to be the tough part when you're when you're a small, you know, if you want to call ourselves a label, uh, right. is the marketing angle. But, you know, I mean, so many kids are just in touch with us who just even Facebook and Twitter and just our Absolutely. website right. and, and stuff like that, that, you know, I just, we're just, you know, we're just, we're going to give it a shot, good, bad, or indifferent. We're going to give it a shot and see, see, see what kind of trouble we get in. So does it mean that you know Obituary will eventually seek, uh, seek out a record label for distribution, or will this be most you know a wholly independent endeavor? It's gonna well we're, you know it's gonna be done on our own label. Okay. Um, that's not you know that you still need some help. I mean we you know you need someone to help you administer the re record label. Right. I mean you know we're gonna be, we're gonna be on the road you know nearly every month next year. Uh -huh. um, and so you know it's kind of hard sitting on the road and playing shows every night and then being at home trying to be in touch with distributors and questions and problems and returns and things like that so right. you know you definitely need someone to help you uh, but we're reaching out and we're getting those contacts mm -hmm. uh, we're making you know putting a little team of people together to help us do it mm -hmm. um, but we're trying to do as much as we can on our own and or at least be in control of the people that we have with us that are, you know, helping us. So. That, that's wonderful. Now, in light of the same, uh, would you do a Kickstarter campaign again in case, uh, you know, of a future album, uh, given it has worked so well for the band? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of become, you know, that, you know, this is a way to go for passionate musicians and bands trying to avoid the oddities of the music industry. Yeah, I mean, it is, but, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, I mean, we hit the goals. I mean, obviously, the people that support us, that was just, it was awesome. Right. Um, but you know, it's, it's still now, it's going to be a lot of work for us, because there's about 900 people, I think, that wound up contributing one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's that's now 900 people we have to go through and, and, and put stuff together for and send them out stuff from right. CDs to digital downloads to T-shirts and stuff like that. So it's... <laughs> It's going to be a significant amount of work for us to put right. all that stuff together and get it all out to everybody. Um, uh, so I, you know, we'll see. I guess when it's all wrapped up and done, you know, I mean, the easy part was kind of throwing a campaign together and and and, and collecting money. But now, you know, to go ahead and fulfill all that, right. um, we have a significant amount of work to do. So uh, maybe when all that's over, I'll, I'll be able to better answer that question. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, it kind of looks like you know you probably probably might have to. Uh, let's say, approach a few people or maybe you can do it on your own using social media because these days, internet is, you know, it's too diverse. People actually, you know, with all these Kickstarter and things, uh, the things have become quite, uh, you know, good for the bands and good for the fans as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I, you, know you, you really could kind of set something up, you know, yourself through your things, you know, may, 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 may basically having people, you know, pre-order the album, uh, you know, throw a T-shirt or something in there to, just to get that early money come in to help you kind of start paying for your, you know, the stuff that's got to get done, you know, in the studio and the producers and 
And then, uh, you know, obviously you got to buy all these CDs to get them distributed in the whole nine yards. So, um, there's a lot to be done, but uh, it, it was it was it was a fun project. I'll tell you that it was it was great to see the number of people that got in there and helped us, and right. and people were excited about it. We did give a lot way a lot of good stuff. Um, there were some a lot of good packages and stuff like that, so it, it was Wonderful. cool. Oh, that's really awesome. Now the new album, uh, you know, has the band written the album based on or you know surrounding any specific thematic concept. Uh, in the past, you have been famous for saying that you know obituary songs have no real message and much of the lyrics are in fact just sounds that fit into the mood of a song <laughs> isn't it <laughs> uh you know man it just it, you know i guess it seems the older i get the you know the more i kind of think and write about certain things uh -huh. but um you know it, it's there's definitely no concept yet behind this album mm -hmm. uh, uh so I, you know, yeah, you know, there is not really going to be any general concept behind the album yet. I mean, we're still we're working with Andreas Marshall right now. Again, he's been working on some artwork and stuff for us. Wow. Um, you know, I, you know, I got a lot of lyrics still to write, kind of to fill in. You know, I know where everything's going and how it's going, but I, I, once again, I, I left I leave time for myself to just let the ideas flow and, right. and cool stuff. So um, we still got some thinking to do on some lyrics and things like that. And then mm -hmm. it's usually when kind of song titles come out and stuff like that. So that, that's awesome. Now talking about artwork, I mean, uh, you, your albums are famous for their vivid and arcane artwork, almost Lovecraftian in a sense, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, oh, what can we expect <laughs> this time? It's, it's always like obituary artworks well, are, wow. It's, it's on big, big level. Yeah, well, you know, it, it is really something that we've been fortunate with over the years, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and just you know some of our concepts and things that we come up with, you know, we work closely with artists to get kind of what we want to do out of it, um, and you know some of those con, you know, Andres Marshall just does a pretty good job of of bringing to life some of those things, and you know, metal kids love their artwork, you know, they love they love the cool T-shirts and things like that, and. Right. Uh, you know, in some in some ways, it's kind of a shame because you know there's not that many albums get pressed anymore. So you actually get to appreciate the big artwork. A lot of people mostly get just a digital download and they get a little thumbnail yeah. on their phone. So right. That's the extent of it. But uh, <laughs> uh, it is important to us. You know, we like that. You know, we like it to set the mood for us. We like it to be cool. You know, nothing too cheesy. Uh, you know, just we like very classic. You know, kind of detailed kind of stuff like that to go right. with it. And um, you know, it makes good backdrops, especially at the end of the day. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, you have one of the most unique vocal styles in the extreme metal. Uh, this is for sure. Now, how did you come to develop this type of vocal style? Or, you know, did you take any time finding your voice? Um, yeah, I mean, I did. I mean, I, you know, we, you know, early on, we just, we weren't one of those bands that, like, played, like, lots of covers. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, we, you, know, you know, like, literally, when we first started, I mean, there was, you know, obviously, we'd, some of the first stuff we ever tried doing was really just writing our own songs right out of the bat, you know, right off the gate. Because right. um, none of us were any good to learn too many songs anyway. But, um, you know, we've learned a couple, or, you know, early, early on, a couple of Venom songs and a couple of Nasty Savage songs and uh -huh. Sabotage, whatever. Um, so, you know, there was that transition period, you know, you know, even with all the band members of where we kind of wanted to go and, and some of the stuff that we did. And I think... You know, a lot of the earlier stuff was maybe a little bit more nasty, savage, or right. a little more sabotage kind of stuff. Um, but it really did not take us long to kind of fall in love with the fact that you know, the heavier we can make it, the better. So right. as Trevor's guitar tone changed over the years, and and things got heavier and heavier, mm -hmm. I think just vocally, I just kind of went along with it. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's kind of what we got. We just wanted things to be really at just as heavy. As, as we possible. can, take. so yeah, uh, and uh, you know, we still we enjoy that to this day, kind of doing that kind of stuff. So that that's really cool because when I look back at your discography, I keep listening to it, and I always find that you know somewhere there's a Venom, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer in influences, which are extremely evident in your music, both being crushing and heavy without necessarily being velocity driven. So you know, could you tell us how those bands influenced Obituary's music? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, uh, you know, 
or you know, early on, only because we, you know, we ride bicycles up and down the street, and guys, Nasty Savage, would be playing in their garage. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what got us started, and and they were heavy, um, you know, it, it, in that in their in own own style and stuff. But when we started here in that early Hellhammer, uh, and then you know into the early Celtic Frost and right. stuff like that, we just you know, we really fell in love with just the, the, the fact of just trying to make something as heavy as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, you know, we just we never we just never went the, the route of trying to be as fast as we could. Mm -hmm. um, it always just seemed like, you know, the faster you get, the thinner things start getting. You know, you, right. can't, you can't slow it down and you feel the one bass drum pumping you in the chest and a snare drum that's cracking your head open <laughs> when it's just going do da do da do da do da do da So. Right. So, and then, but you know, but you know, with that said, we, you know, we you, you like to get into those fast rhythms. You like to get things going and get the crowd ripped into a frenzy. Mm -hmm. And then you all of a sudden you just downshift hard and kick it into some slow gear, right. where it just makes you just want to sit there and just rip your face off. <laughs> uh, and, and then just you know, over the years, I think we just kind of just made our bread and butter by right. you know all the groovy rhythms that kind of come up with is just. So very non-death metal in ways, just a very groovy thing that you know a lot of these heavy bands don't get into. Right. Um, but it's just one of the things that obituary kind of just thrives on is finding that you know that groovy tone to to to, to bridge that gap between fast and slow. Absolutely awesome. I mean, it's it's so nice to hear how the entire uh, you know the the obituary's music right from the beginning till now how it has you know been diverse using a lot of influences and of course your own sound it's really awesome now at the same time what are the obituary albums that are very close to your heart you know is there uh, is there is there pressure to match the you know memorability and quality of those albums whenever the band embarks on a new studio album well <clears throat> You know, I mean, I guess you, you maybe I don't really know if I kind of try to go out, you know, when we start an album and compare it to any other album to try and duplicate something that we did or didn't do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on that. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think maybe about the only time I think when we did that Frozen in Time album because we we've just been apart from each other for so long, like seven or eight, nine years. Yep. And, and you know, when when we started getting back together to do that album, which was just kind of off the cuff, you know, it was kind of like the way we just kind of stopped jamming. It wasn't like we broke up or anything. We just all kind of got busy doing other stuff. True. And there wasn't very really much out there for us. I mean, it kind of seemed like the scene kind of down, died down. And, and, and it's just, you know, you know, we just kind of got busy doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like just as easy as we kind of stepped back from it and got busy doing other things that we stepped right back into it and then just started jamming. And you know, it was like no time at all. We just kind of put an album together and but. You know, during that time, I remember thinking to myself, you know, God, we haven't, you know, I haven't really, because I, I didn't do anything whatsoever mm -hmm. singing wise vocally for those six, eight, eight years or so. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any. Uh, some of the other guys, you know, Trevor did some catastrophic stuff, and DT was messing around with Andrew WK and stuff. So they kind of, they stayed with the kind of music stuff, and I was mm -hmm. totally out. Of it. So when we started getting back into it, I was kind of wondering if what my voice would sound like. You know, did it change? It's been eight years, you know, since I've right. Um, you know, so that was that was one of the few times I remember actually kind of thinking a little bit about what an album might come out sounding. That we've been away for so for so long, but right. um, it seems like it just once we get got going, it was like riding a bike. We hopped right back up there and went for it. Um, but you know, as far as the albums meaning something, you know, more than one or the other, um, you know, you know, sometimes you'll just you know you'll reach over and grab one of our old CDs and I'll start looking at it mm -hmm. and it just brings back different memories from that period of time. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like a little diary through your life there, a uh, certain time of your life that you can go back and listen to it. So, um, but you know, with that said, I, you know, with solely arrived, I can kind of still remember the day I, where I was standing when I got that first copy of our first album. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that's always will be a special, a special meeting right moment, there. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wonderful. Now, you know, there are so many uh, fans in India here who basically follow you as well as Donald. And I've been asked so many times by the friends here that what's the status with the Tardy Brothers project? I mean, <laughs> so what's happening? I mean, could you tell us uh, how different or probably there's something coming up in future? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely will. We definitely will be doing something else. Um, you know, right now, I mean, you know, anytime that obituary is really like, you know, not doing much, if we're kind of, you know, everybody's taking a break or we just got done touring or whatever, um, you know, Dahl and I wind up out here in the studio messing around. 
mm-hmm. um, which is kind of how the first album came out. It's just a you know matter of he you know he really loves playing the guitar, um, and I love playing the drums. Right. Um, and you know so we just we we always spend times out here messing around, um, and it really wasn't until we bought our own Pro Tools rig and had our own studio mm-hmm. um, that it just once we had that it was like okay. So now every little thing that we used to mess around with, we can sit and put on tape, right. and we sort of songs together and stuff. So it, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, writing with Donald, just the two of us coming up with our own ideas and and everything, just the two of us. Right. Um, and uh, so, so it was cool. I, mean, I think it's still a heavy album, um, but uh, and it's going to sound a little bit like Obituary in places, just because it's Donald and I doing something. So. Right. Um, have some similarities there, but you know, obviously, Donald's guitar playing is, you know, vastly different from Trevor. So, right. uh, but it gave us that opportunity to have you know some cleaner guitar sounds, and then um, you know, we're both kind of big fans of having lots of leads. Um, you know, you know, some of those albums that come out, and they got a lot of really good lead players on them, and a lot of good solos. Um, that's fun for me to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really fit that much with Obituary, which is why we kind of stay away. You know, there's there's some cool right. parts here. But for the most part, it's not that type of music that needs leads just put all over it and things like that. So, you know, with the Tardy Brothers, we were able to, to do a little bit more of that. So we had, you know, like five different guitar players we had do that, out, you know, play leads on it. Which right. Which gives a nice feel and change of pace throughout the whole album Absolutely. when you're listening. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And, and you know, we, we anytime we get a few extra moments, he and I put stuff down and we got stuff on tape and we were working on some songs. And we'll definitely do another Tardy Brothers album before long. Wow, that's really awesome. Now, you know, talking about playing live, you know, what is it like, you know, to be on stage rocking out and you look at the crowd and you see a sea of cell phones up in the air taking photographs or videos? (laughs) I know, I know, I know from my side, you know, in the crowd, it's very annoying and distracting. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I. I mean, I mean, a playing live, I think, is what obituary is all about. I mean, we are a live band. Period. Our music, our music comes across and is just built and designed to be live. Period. Right. Because you know, there's the vast majority of the people do not like our albums. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I understand that. Not a lot of people like death metal to start with, and, and most people, you know, if you look at the actual, you know, the whole population. Um, you know, most people aren't going to like our albums. They're not going to want to drive around and listen to Obituary in their car. It just, it just doesn't come across good for them. Right. But I would like to think that a lot of people, if they could come hang out with us, go to an Obituary show, mm-hmm. if they didn't get into some of that show right there, some of those rhythms live and feel it like we feel it, then they, right. they got some issues. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, our music is live, as, as live as can be. Now, you know, kind of back to the other point of the question there, you know, it is a little bit weird because some guys you'll see just stand there and they watch the whole concert through their phone right. as they're sitting there recording. And I'm like, dude, put the phone down, get yourself a cold beer and, you know, get this going, let's get going right. here, man. But, uh, you know, hey, whatever, uh, whatever you want to do is is your gig, so. Absolutely. That's, that's really true. Now, you know, do you keep the modern metal scene, uh, you know, at all? Are you keep, do you keep up with that? And, you know, are there any bands that stood out to you? Well, yeah, I, I'm probably one of the worst people to ask about newer bands. Um, it takes me years to catch up with things. Uh, you know, most of the time, you know, most of the time, you know, when I'm at home, I mean, I'd say, especially, you know, right now we're recording, so I don't listen to a lot of music to begin with because I got so much going through my mind with my own songs right. um, that I, I, I really don't want the cross contamination or listen to the too much uh, stuff. There, I, I kind of want to leave my mind open. Um, mm-hmm. But that aside, you know, when the touring's done and albums are done and I'm just at home and, and, and you know, I got to come back here and clean the studio or something, right. um, I want to I jam some music. Um, I just find myself reaching for those old Venom albums, you know, the old Possess, the Slayer right. album. And, you know, that's just me. I'm just kind of, you know, stuck in the past like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but I do, you know, oddly enough, when some pe- other people come over and we're hanging out and people are just kind of putting different music on and this and that. Um, you know, they, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there. I mean, a lot of these young kids nowadays are right. so talented. You know, you know, listen to some of the stuff these drummers are just, you know, uh, you know, everybody just you know, they're so, t- they're d- so double bass and stuff like that. So yeah, but you know, they, it, it's like yeah. I mean, some of the music, you know, with, with you know, with the speed and stuff, that just gets away from my style. But it doesn't stop me from like appreciating how good that they are, what they right. are doing. Right. So. Uh, 
but nonetheless, uh, you know, like I said, most of the stuff I listen to, I just I'm kind of stuck in the past with my old uh, stuff. But I do like a lot of the new, you know, the new, the new Lamb of God stuff is is really good. Oh, great. Uh, you know, those guys are, you know, those guys are, you know, an exception to the rule right there. They're really absolutely, really good. absolutely. Now, in one single sentence, how would you define your new album? Obituary. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it's, 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 I mean, it's an absolute handful. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, we we're just enjoying these albums. They're, you know, we, we can't, we have to stop each other from, you know, stopping in the middle of a song and just saying, can you imagine what's going to happen when we walk on stage in front of 30,000 wow. people at festivals? And this song breaks into this rhythm right now. Do you know what's going to happen? It's just going to be insane. Yeah. Um, so it really is. I mean, it, it just some of the rhythms just make the hair on your arm stand up when you hear them for the first time. Um, it, it's super catchy. It's got just a ton of meaty rhythms. Um, you know, once again, I think the last album we actually had one of the fastest right. tempo songs we've ever done. But I think I think we have stepped that up even one time more on one of the songs on this wow. album. So it does got some speed. Um, you know, poor DTs. You know. It seems like the older he gets, the faster we're trying to make him do double bass. So he's got his work cut out for him, and uh, better eat his Wheaties because he's got he's got some work to do. Um, Donald but, is on uh, fire always. DT, he's got his he's got his he's got his work cut out for him on this album. So right, that's awesome. <laughs> have him yeah. oh, that's really awesome. My day starts with Redneck Stamp. I got to be honest with you. All right. That that's me you know. Wrong. I'll tell you something about that song. You know, we we wrote that song. And, uh, you know, the guys would keep looking at me. I don't do like, I don't like have a PA set up out here that I sing through or anything. When I start singing and stuff, I just kind of sing in the room. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really, you know, have anything to sing and I can set the pole tools up and sing whatever, but I, I just don't even bother. I just sing out in the room while they're just jamming. But, you know, so when, the, when we start writing rhythms, you know, they're always looking at me to kind of sing and well, you know, I kind of give them a thumbs up. I'm like, yes, I like that rhythm. Let's kind of do that as something I want to sing to. Well, as we were doing Redneck Stomp, you know, they'd keep looking over at me, and I would just keep like, no, I'm not singing anything, and I'm not singing anything, and it got to a point, and I'm just like, I don't think the song needs any lyrics to it. I think it needs to stay the way it is. And of course, Donald and Trevor, the way they are, they're like, okay, fine, done. And so we recorded the album like that. Well, Scott Burns comes into the studio, and he's listening to it, and he's like, he goes like, there's no vocals on the song? I was like, no, no. But then we tell him, this is how we're going to start the album off. And he goes, you, you can't start the album off. This, you, know, you can't start the album off with a song that doesn't have any lyrics to it, no vocals. Right. And we're like, sure we can. <laughs> and then, you know, as it turns out, everybody loves that song. It's a bit of an anthem. And it's, you know, we, we you know, for years and years, we'd open up every set with it. You know, you're just, you know, at the beginning of the set, you know, all right, of a sudden it goes, right. and you just, that first rhythm start. And, and it's a good, great way to get, get, get a crowd going. But, uh, so it's just kind of funny, Scott Burns. You can't you can't put that album first on the that song first on the album. I was like, sure we can. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really awesome. Now you know, before I you know call it because it's been an awesome time with you. I would like to know uh, what are the prospects of the band coming to a country like India. Uh, you know, I mean, what's, hey, a general, you know what? what's a general trend of concert or touring offers for a band like Obituary as far as the type of countries the band generally gets offers from. I, you know, I mean, we, I, I don't really know off the top of my head. I'm sure we've gotten some offers to go to India. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this year, or, you know, this year, last year, I should say, um, you know, we kind of went to a lot of places over there in that, in that uh, Asian run that we went to. Uh -huh. um, so we've been over, you know, getting close to that away. Um, but what I can tell you about India is I know it's caught a lot of people's attention on um how many albums are actually getting sold over there nowadays? Um, and I believe Lamb of God has gone there, right? Yes, two times. Because I know I remember specifically when uh, you know Donald talks to to to, to uh, Chris some you know a lot of times on the phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know we specific, you know we asked him once we knew that they went there, uh, and they said they had a great time and 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 it was really a good time for them. Um, so I know it's on our radar things to do and uh, you know I would I would love to get over there and play in India wonderful John thank you so much for sparing your precious time it's it's been an honor oh man well, I appreciate it brother thank you man <laughs>